Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, tonight I'm going to continue the study of the book of Acts, and I'm going to start tonight with uh, chapter 20, verse 1. If you have not seen all the previous studies on Acts, I urge you to go back from, to the beginning. Uh, all the other videos are uploaded and available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. So now, beginning with chapter 20, verse 1 in the KJV, it says, oops, it would be helpful if they were clean so I could see when I'm reading. That's better. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece. And there abode three months, and when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return, return through Macedonia. Uh, so, to give you just a little context here, okay, again, you need to watch this whole series from the beginning, but... Um, we are in chapter 20, and a lot of things have already happened. Uh, there's 28 chapters, so we've covered a lot of ground already. But in uh, the beginning of the book, it, it starts off with Pentecost, the beginning of the church. Now, over 20 years have passed between Pentecost and where we are right now. Over the 20 years, a lot of historic things happened. Uh, you had the, uh, uh, the the death of Stephen, uh, the first martyr of the church. That was about three and a half years after Pentecost. Um, you had uh, the conversion of Paul about uh, shortly after that, um, about maybe four years after Pentecost. Uh, or, or, I'm sorry, about another three years, so it'd be about six years after Pentecost was the conversion of Paul. Uh, you had the um, um, conversion of uh, Cornelius and his family, the first Gentile believers. Uh, Peter was called to preach to the Gentiles first, and he preached to Cornelius and his family, so we, that was about ten years after Pentecost. Uh, and, and now we have about 20 years after Pentecost, we have Paul on his first missionary journey, and for several chapters now, Paul is going from city to city, spreading the gospel and planting churches, and and uh, but everywhere he goes, his his custom to first go into the uh, the synagogue in the city. Uh, he he never lost his love for his brethren, the the Jewish people. Um, he never gave up on on bringing them to Jesus. Uh, but he got three basic reactions every time he went to the synagogue. Some people would believe, and now they're saved, Jewish believers in Jesus. Uh, other of them would reject the message and not believe. And then others would reject the message so strongly that they would want to kill Paul. And in fact, they did stone him and leave him for dead a few chapters ago. Uh, and so, and they're still out to kill him, and that's what this is alluding to here, right here, where it says that, uh, um, and there are both three months, and when the Jews laid wait for him, so the the, the, the Jews just wherever Paul is, whenever they discover he is, they they seek to kill him. Uh, let me read these first few verses in the Amplified. It says, after the uproar had ended, Paul sent for the disciples. And when he had encouraged them, he told them goodbye and set off to go to Macedonia. After he had gone through those districts and had encouraged the believers, he came to Greece. And he stayed three months, and when a plot was formed against him by the Jews, as he was about to set sail for Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. That's northern Greece. Okay, so back to the KJV uh, verse 4. And there accompanied him into Asia Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby and Timotheus, uh, uh, and of Asia, Tychicus, 
uh, and Trophimus. I don't think I'm pronouncing all the names correctly, but uh, um, uh, as a matter of fact, if I read it in the Amplified, it might give me some other uh, spellings of it, so I'll read that at, at next. But verse 5, these going before tarried for us at Troas. Uh, and we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. Now, this is important to understand that in the introduction to the book of Acts, um, it was very important to understand that the book of Acts is written by uh, the same person that wrote the gospel according to Luke. Uh, Luke is the author of Acts, and he is a great historian, and he's also a physician. <clears throat> and he is a companion to Paul in these journeys. And so sometimes he's writing from the this uh, uh, second person, uh, uh, giving an account uh, of... Uh, or from the perspective of Paul and the others, and sometimes he's writing it from the first person, or the third person, I should say, we. It says in six, verse 6, and we sailed away from Philippi. So, it, we sailed? Well, this is not Paul writing this, talking about him and, and the others. This is Luke writing, saying we sailed. So Luke is a uh, participant here, and he's telling it from his, his account right now. Uh, let me read this portion through the Amplified. Uh, verse 4, He was accompanied by Sopater of Berea, the son of, uh, the son of Pyrrhus, and by Aristarchus and Secundus of the Thessalonians, and by Gaius of Derbe and Timothy, and Tychicus and Trophimus of Asia. These men went on ahead and were waiting for us, including Luke, at Troas, so see, this is letting you know here that Luke is including himself in this, and in the Amplified, they insert that, saying, including Luke. Luke is, is, see, when it says, they were waiting for us, uh, uh, in, in verse 5 in the King James, it says, these going before tarried for us at Troas. So who's the us? Who's the we? Uh, it's Luke and and Paul and the others. Uh, you can see it clear, more clearly here in the Amplified. These men went on ahead and were waiting for us, including Luke at Troas. We sailed from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, uh, Passover week, and within five days we reached them at Troas, where we stayed for seven days. So Luke is... Uh, he, he's kind of... Uh, in hindsight, people looking back and studying history and this biblical account of the history of the early church, uh, people give uh, Luke credit for being a great historian of the time uh, because his, he writes with such detail uh, people, places, events, and that could be uh, documented, supported as actual historical uh, events and um, historical people. So, verse 7 in the KJV, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named uh, Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep, and as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, embracing him, said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. Oh, that's amazing, amazing verses there. Uh, uh, <laughs> we can find, I think I find some humor in it. Uh, it's a tragedy, but then he's alive. So was he not really dead? No, the scripture says he fell down uh, and was taken up dead. So the scripture says he was dead. And then Paul falls on him and he, life is in him. So uh, did Paul do CPR? It doesn't say that. It just says Paul fell on him. So he laid hands on him, laid him, embraced him, and he was resurrected. He was uh, brought back to life. 
Uh, so these kinds of things happen throughout all of the chapters of Acts, the apostles, um, Peter, uh, mostly in the beginning, and now Paul and the other apostles were performing these signs and wonders, and all kinds of miraculous things were going on, and these served as signs to people to give them confidence that Paul and Peter and the others were legitimate. They, they should be recognized as true representatives of God, and not only um, to um, give them that status, uh, but also to have confidence that what they're telling them is the truth. Um, so, but it says that uh, Paul was preaching for a long time. Uh, it says and he continued to speak until midnight. Um, I don't know what time he started, but he's preaching a long time. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they gathered together, and there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus uh, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching... I don't know, have you ever gone to a church where the preaching is going on and on? And I mean, I remember many years ago, before I was truly a Christian, I would, as a kid, would go to church and it seemed like, God, when is this thing going to be over? That's Roman Catholicism. The, 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 the church service is so boring and, and uh, just so much ritual and very little substance. Uh, and you just get bored to death and most people are just going there and tolerating it and doing it as a religious duty rather than uh, a, a great desire to come and have fellowship and learn and with great attention. That's the way I would uh, attend church today. Uh, if, if I'm going to go to a church that I believe the pastor is teaching correctly, and I, I would go and have great interest. But uh, so many times... Uh, uh, the teaching is, is very boring. It goes on and on and on. Partly is to be blamed by the the, the pastor or the, the preacher, and, and part of the blame, blame probably comes to the, the the churchgoer because maybe they go there with the wrong attitude, out, out of duty. They're not going because they're really interested, but uh, they feel it obligated because they think that through following some religious devotion that they will earn salvation, but. Uh, if you if you uh, follow my channel, uh, you you know I teach what the Bible says that salvation is not earned because of our good behavior, but salvation is received as a free gift from Jesus to all of those who call on His name and say, "Jesus, save me! I'm going to rely on You. I'm depending on You for my salvation." When someone appeals to Jesus and trusts Him, they receive salvation freely as a gift, uh, but. If people think that they've got to earn salvation, then they feel it's a duty to go to church, even though they don't have any interest. And, and this kind of a thing, you could easily fall asleep. And he fell asleep and fell from the third floor to his death. Let me read this portion in the Amplified. Um, verse 7. Now on the first day of the week, Sunday, see, um, uh, I, I believe... This is the first reference in the scriptures of meeting on the first day of the week. Uh, if, if you can think of some other time that where this is cited, then let me know. Uh, but I don't recall. Uh, of course, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, we don't find it. And the church hadn't even started in, in any way. But once Pentecost happened, the beginning of Acts, all through these, all these chapters of Acts, I do not remember any time saying that they met on the first day of the week. I assume they've been meeting on this the first time we actually have it recorded. Now on the first day of the week, Sunday, when we were gathered together to break bread, that is share communion, Paul began talking with them, intending to leave the next day. So he started talking and it wasn't, uh, uh, it, it, I guess his intention to preach all night, but it says, and he kept on with his message until midnight. Now, there were many lamps in the upper room where we were assembled. So it says where we were assembled. So Luke is writing from the third person's perspective. It's a, from his own perspective and, and, and saying we. So he's including himself in the company of Paul. 
where we were assembled, and there was a young man named Eutychus, uh, which means lucky, I guess. It says lucky. So maybe, <laughs> it's, that's not that crazy. Uh, the names of people in the Bible reflect their lives. Uh, it's amazing. Like uh, uh, Jacob, who was later called Israel, uh, his name translates to um, a trickster, uh, uh, and that's what he did. He, he was uh, he, he tricked his father, he tricked his brother into giving him his uh, uh, inheritance. He tricked his father into giving the blessing that w was supposed to go to uh, uh, Esau, uh, and uh, so his name is Jacob, and that's what it means. And that's the way he actually was. And it, it, that's one of, of a, many, many, many examples. And here's another one. It's Eutychus, and his name means lucky. Well, how lucky was he? Well, I don't think it's luck, really. But most people say, hey, if you fall down and die, and uh, that's bad luck. But if you brought back to life, you were lucky. No, you were blessed. I, that's why when people are talking to me in my daily life, and they use the word, oh, you're lucky. You're I tell them something good is happening. Like, oh, you're very lucky. It's no luck is is for um, uh, the, um, the the secular world, the non-believing world. Uh, well, I'm not lucky. I'm blessed because I believe the good things that come to me are blessings from God. So, was he lucky or was he blessed? Uh, but it says Eutychus means lucky. Uh, so it says. And there was a young man named Eutychus, or Lucky, sitting on the window sill. He was sinking into a deep sleep, and as Paul kept on talking longer and longer, he was completely overcome by sleep and fell down from the third story, and he, and he was picked up dead. But Paul went down and threw himself on him and embraced him and said to those standing around him, Do not be troubled, because he is alive. All right, verse 11 in the KJV. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. This is referring to Paul. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little com comforted. Well, let me see. Verse 11 in the Amplified. It might be referring to Eutychus. Let's see how they see it. No, it says, when Paul had gone back upstairs. So I was correct. Um, verse 11 says, when he therefore was come up again. This is referencing Paul. Um, now, verse 12. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. So that means they were um, very comforted. You see, a lot of times in the Bible they use double negatives. Double negative means a positive. So it says they were not a little comforted. That means, therefore, they were very comforted, not just a little, very comforted. So they're very happy that the young man's alive. Verse 13, And we went before to ship and sailed unto Assos, there intending to take in Paul, for so had he appointed, minding himself to go afoot. And when he met us at Assos, we took him in and came to Mytilene. Fourteen. Uh, let me see, Mytilene, 14. Um, and we sailed thence and came the next day over against Chios. And the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried at Trogilium. And the next day we came to Miletus. So you're really getting not only a detailed historical record of all the travels, uh, but um, which, which adds to the credibility that we can trust this book of Acts uh, because it's such a detailed historical record. Uh, but you can also can get the impression of how busy, how hard they work, working in all their traveling, doing evangelism, church planting, encouraging the churches. For Paul had determined to sail to Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted 
if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you all, you all at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to both Jews and also to the Greeks. The Greeks just means the Gentiles, the non-Jews. Uh, repentance towards God, that means that uh, you change your mind, you're not, not believing in God and, and believing in God, but more and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. So believe in the one true God and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Hmm. So he's just determined to go to Jerusalem. Uh, he feels compelled to go. Um, but he knows that uh, uh, the Holy Ghost says, the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. So he knows that he'll be imprisoned, he'll be afflicted, uh, he'll be beaten with rods, beaten with whips, he was stoned, he'll be snake bitten, he'll be shipwrecked. All these things he knows are in his future, and yet he's determined to go on anyway. Let me read that portion in the uh, Amplified, starting with verse 14. So when he met us at Assos, we took him on board and sailed on to Mytilene. Sailing from there, we arrived the next day at a point opposite Chios. The following day, we crossed over to Samos, and the next day we were, were arrived at Miletus, about 30 miles south of Ephesus. Paul had decided to sail on past Ephesus so that he would not end up spending time unnecessarily in the province of Asia, that's modern Turkey, for he was in a hurry to be in Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. However, from Miletus, he sent word to Ephesus and summoned the elders of the church to meet him there, and when they arrived, he said to them, you know well how I lived. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> you know well how I lived when I was with you from the first day that I set foot in Asia until now, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and trials which came on me because of the plots of the Jews against me. You know how I did not shrink back in fear from telling you anything that was for your benefit and from teaching you in public meetings and from house to house, solemnly and wholeheartedly testifying to both Jews and Greeks, urging them to turn in repentance to God and to have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. And now, compelled by the Spirit and obligated by my convictions, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit solemnly and emphatically affirms to me in city after city that imprisonment and suffering await me. I'm going to stop there. <clears throat> Pick up, that's the end of verse 23. I'll pick up with verse 24 next time. Uh, it's going to probably take me quite a long time to finish these last eight chapters of Acts. So I'm going to try to do one half or one third of a chapter each time so that these videos are a little bit shorter. All right, so um, uh, thank you for watching. I, again, I urge you, if you haven't seen this series from the beginning, go back and watch it from Acts chapter 1, verse 1. And this is a 30-year historical record of the church, the early church. 
Uh, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.